welcome. This is Yoga Pilates Fusion. <laughs> sure you already knew that though. <laughs> In any case, grab a, if you have it, a yoga block and a blanket. If you don't want to use those, you don't have to, you can just start lying down. But if you have, uh, we'll use the yoga block later. <laughs> if you have a blanket, roll it up so that you've got a long sort of narrow pillow and we'll put that down the length of our spine and start like that. So, you might want that blanket to start kind of right where the bottom of your rib cage is. You can also use a yoga block here um, underneath your shoulder blades and that will start way up high, right underneath the shoulder blades, as opposed to right down most of the length of your spine. And then you might want some head support as well. So another block or a pillow or something for that. Once you're set up, whether it's <clears throat> using a blanket or using a block or you know just lying down, you can decide how you want your legs to go as well. So you could do constructive rest just, just feet on the floor, you know, at a distance apart that feels like the leg can relax and the hips relax. You can have the legs out straight or you can bring the feet together and have little butterfly wings. So whatever of those feels like the nicest <laughs> option for this morning, go with that one. And we're just going to take a few minutes to one, settle, relax, kind of become uh, really present in the moment that we're in. So we'll drop our to-do list for now. Take all of our attention and direct it towards the practice that we're up to today. we're going to mostly engage in for the next couple minutes is a practice of breathing in such a way that we feel the rib cage moving. Try to get some movement going in the um, little muscles in between the ribs. Two more breaths like that. All right, so now all we can do is just take the pillow out and come on back. Now, if you like, you could do some little windshield wipers with your legs. That feels nice to me. Oh. You can just get all stretched out because we're going to start there. <laughs> so we'll stretch the legs and the arms out and then curve ourselves into a little banana shape. So I'm starting with my left side as the stretchy side and the right side as the curled in side. You could cross the like the left leg over the right leg here. You can bend at the elbows if you like, or change anything. If you want to put your blanket underneath your knees, you could do that. You might notice 
And the breath pattern changes a little bit because one lung is a little under a little more pressure than the other. sensitivity in a different way as you inhale versus the exhale. Take one more big breath here. And then we'll come on back to the center. And give ourselves a moment to see how that sort of shakes down. For me, the left side now feels just a little longer than the right side. There's just a little sense that maybe like the side of my waist and my thigh has just gotten a wee bit tra tractioned out. Do the opposite side. So if you're not quite ready, don't come, you know, don't do the other side yet. You could take another breath or two. And again, we might it might just be a matter of stretching out. It might be like one ankle crossed over the other. There might be a little different bend in the elbows or something along that line. Two more breaths. And come on back to the center and see if everything feels a little bit more even. <laughs> Again, if the, some sort of movement feels nice, you can bring your knees into your chest. I love these little kind of back and forth windshield wipery legs. You can do that. I'm gonna head back up my mat here. All right, we're gonna bring the knees up so that they sort of line up just below the top rim of the pelvis. So we have a little bit of room to curl them in and flex the spine in the center. We're gonna keep the shoulders on the mat, bring the legs over to the right or the left to start with. You could straighten one leg, you could straighten both legs, you can just curl the knees in toward the armpit. We come back to the center, knees are over the hips, and then we curl that in, come over to the opposite side, same idea. So straighten a leg or curl in. And we're just gonna go back and forth, a nice smooth, almost like a dance pattern. One more set. We'll curl in one more time. When you get there, grab hold of your right leg, and then as you settle out, you'll let your left leg get straight on the floor for you know, stretched out. We'll take that right foot and make circles. Loosen up the ankle joint, make a little movement happen there. Go the opposite direction. And then we're going to point and flex. You might spread out and squish the toes as well.
try straightening out that leg and then bringing it in. So if your hamstrings are tighter, you might not want to keep holding on to the leg. You can <laughs> let go of it as you straighten it out. You could grab your big toe and hold on to that instead of holding on to the thigh. You can keep the knee a little bit bent. Whatever the right answer is, <laughs> feel that out. All right, I'm gonna straighten it out one more time, then I'm gonna leave it there. Take this left leg, turn it so the toes point straight up. I'm gonna snuggle my shoulder blades in and press my upper back and upper arms into the floor and then draw in the sides of the waist of the navel. So we're gonna try to keep the torso nice and still as we take that leg in whatever the <laughs> whatever the size circle your hip will go for. Trying to hold steady through the torso, so we're using the abdominal muscles there as stabilizers. Okay, last one of those. To the top, we're going to take the opposite direction. We'll go out to the side, sweep the legs together, and come up the center. Again, work in an appropriate range of motion. One more of those. All right, now we're going to bring that knee in. And stretch the other one out. So I've got one curled in knee, one straight leg. I'm reaching through the straight leg. I put my hands behind my head, but you might reach down towards your ankle. And then we're going to add a little extra curl by squeezing all the air out and squeezing the abdominal muscles to flex the spine. So we're not pulling from the neck. We're engaging from the abs. Stretch out, curl in. Switch legs, curl in. Switch, curl. Curl from your abs. One more set. Now we'll grab hold of the left leg. Let the right one stretch out and relax. We'll spin the left foot in nice circles elliptical pattern of some sort. <laughs> and go the opposite direction. And we're going to point and flex. Stretch out that leg and then curl it in and stretch it out. Curl it in, stretch it out. one of those and then I'm going to leave that leg where it is and again we're going to take this right leg turn it so the toes point up and draw the shoulders in and press the upper back into the floor draw the waist in take that leg across make a nice big circle trying to hold steady through the torso time. We're going to stop at the top. We'll go out to the side, bring the legs together and come straight up the middle.
two more of those. All right, once the legs come back together, we're gonna take that, either you can bring your hands behind your head and curl your spine up and extend the legs straight up, or you can leave your head on the ground and instead put the hands down. They could just rest beside you or you can have them kind of tucked in under the hips. The most important part of this is that we prevent the pelvis from tilting forward and the low back from um, overarching off the floor. We're trying to keep our low back curve nice and consistent. You might be able to do that because of the length of your legs and the size of your torso. You might be able to do that just by controlling that with a flexed spine, keeping your abdominal muscles nice and tight. Or if the body proportions are different, you might have a better option of controlling that situation if you add the extra, thing, uh, extra support from your hands. So choose appropriately. We're gonna glue the heels together, reach through the legs, spread the toes out, and then we'll lower the legs for a count of four, three, two, one. Wherever we land, we're gonna draw the navel back and hover, three, two, one, and then come back. Lower four, three, two, one, hover four, three, two, one, and return. Lower four, three, two, one, hover four, three, two, one, return. Lower four, three, two, one, hover four, three, two, one, return. Lower four, three, two, one, hover four, three, two, one, and return. Lower four, three, two, one, hover four, three, two, one, return. Last round, lower four, three, two, one, hover four, three, two, one, return. We're gonna release the legs. Give yourself a nice big stretch. Ooh. Maybe some of those little windshield wipers or grab the knees and hug them in. Ooh. We're gonna just flip upside down. So we land on the belly. We're gonna do a series of Cobra. So we'll start with the hands really high up. Your entire forearm might hit the ground. <laughs> it might not. <laughs> Again, all of our body proportions are different. Length of bones, size of joints, that kind of jazz. But you know, somewhere so that the hands feel like they're sort of lined up with your face. With the palms uh, you know, planted on the floor and the fingers spread out a little bit, we're gonna circle the shoulders. And there might be a limited range of motion. We're gonna change it up along the way. Circle the other way. Plant the legs if you can. If it bothers your knee to plant your shins on the floor, bend at the knee a little or a lot and plant the thighs on the floor. Lift up, draw back through the hands. We're broadening the chest. We'll come on back down, slide the hands back about, I don't know, half an inch or an inch, and then we'll circle the shoulders again. In both directions. And draw the shoulders back, lift yourself into Cobra. Again, it's not a push up, we're lifting. And then we use the floor to broaden the chest and widen out through the collarbones. We'll come on back down, we'll slide the hands back again. If your wrists are gonna allow it, circle the shoulders. In both directions. Draw the shoulders back, lift into Cobra, broaden out. We'll come back down. If we've got room, we'll do it one more time. Take the hands back a little farther, circle the shoulders. In both directions. 
lifted the cobra, broaden the chest. You can look over each shoulder if you like. Just a little extra. <laughs> when you're ready, we're gonna come on back down. Oh. So we're gonna take ourselves to all fours and do some little rounds of cat. So like a Halloween cat and then let your pelvis tilt the other way, broaden out the chest, let the upper back get a little, like a, you know, the way tigers <laughs> kind of let their shoulder blades lift off their back when they wander through a forest. <laughs> Different kinds of cats for sure, but, <laughs> but still rounding and then tucking. We've got a movement in the pelvis and then there's a little corresponding movement through the whole length of the spine. right leg forward and we'll do a lunge. Now, this is where a yoga block or two might come in handy. You can keep your hands on the floor as we move back and forth. You can also choose not to move back and forth if it bothers your knee. You can also use some blocks. The torso is a little bit higher up so I'm going to move back so my front leg goes a little straight and then I'm going to move forward feeling that lunge happen in my hip. to keep my heel tucked in against my hip a little bit in the back of the leg. It just keeps my knee nice and steady. All right, we're going to choose a lunge now that we're going to hang out with. Now you can keep your hands low. You can come all the way up, maybe even bring your arms overhead. You could add a side bend or a twist or hold on to that foot in the back. Ooh. I'm feeling a lot of sensitivity right there in my hip flexors today, so I'm going to go for the most simple option. But add on as you like. We'll take about three more breaths. Now we're going to fold ourselves, straighten out. So we've got that front leg almost all the way straight or straight. <laughs> and then fold over it. You can wander that leg a little farther forward so it's almost like you're becoming more in the, um, in the splits, <laughs> but that's not a requirement. <laughs> but if you don't feel a hamstring stretch, if you ease your foot forward, you probably will. If you already feel a hamstring stretch, there is no reason to add on. <laughs> I mean, there might be, but I can't, I can't tell you that it's a good reason. We'll take two more breaths here. Now I'm going to bring both my hands over here to the right and I'm going to take my left, or I'm sorry, over to the left. I'm going to take my right leg back and then my left arm off the floor. So I've got a little spinal balance there. You can just hold that steady or curl in and stretch. Curl in and stretch, curl in and stretch. Now, oh, we're gonna take that leg back to the ground, give ourselves a couple of rounds of cat or some child's pose, whatever you think would be better. I'm gonna do one more of those. All right, and then we're gonna bring ourselves into the lunge on the other side. And again, I'm going to go forward and back a few times. This is optional. If it feels as nice to you as it does to me, <laughs> definitely do it. <laughs> through this pattern one more time and then I'll come back to the lunge. And again, I'm kind of just keeping it simple with my lunge, but you can do any version of a lunge that seems appropriate to you. 
just let your hip flexors, <laughs> the amount of sensitivity that you're experiencing, how wobbly you feel, <laughs> let all of that be your guide. <sighs> Choose appropriately. Two more breaths. And then we're gonna take the hips back. Oh, and leg out straight. <laughs> we'll give our hamstrings another check-in. here and then we're going to take ourselves into that spinal balance left leg and right arm and again you might just hold that and stretch or add in the little curls opportunity to transition onto our feet. So downward dog might be, uh, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> that might be the vehicle to get onto your feet. If for whatever reason downward dog is just feeling vulnerable right now, you can um, do a squat and come into a standing pose from there or just get yourself on your feet in the best way you know how. And then you might hang out with a forward bend or do some stretches. What happens once you're on your feet <laughs> might be a nice little time to just explore. Oh, and then we'll, we'll all catch up together in a bit. Oh. I like to mess around with the position of my shoulders, do a little walking in place, some little hip movements, <laughs> sometimes some little three-legged dogs a wide-legged dog. I'm also a big fan of kind of <laughs> hanging out with a wide-angle forward bend <laughs> with some variations as well. Trying to get in touch and we've stretched our hamstrings out a couple times just checking in with my inner thighs here <laughs> right before we come back to the center all right within the next like three breaths or so let's find our way to a mountain pose Ooh. mountain pose we're going to turn the feet if we can parallel so that the you know, toes point forward there's some you know hip shapes for whom that is going to automatically just feel a little interesting and different if it's problematic you can adjust the legs as you need so that there's not any pain or burning sensations or anything like that in your joints Notice where your weight distributes. Sometimes, especially on the first mountain pose for me, and my calves are a little tight and they kind of push me onto my toes. So if I put my weight evenly in my feet, I can feel that little extra bit of tension in my calf muscles. And what happens if your feet are evenly weighted? What happens if you spread your toes out a little bit? And we'll take two more breaths, just hanging out with mountain pose for a moment, seeing what <laughs> What's, what's our baseline here? Do 
I'm gonna come back and compare it. So take a nice big breath, reach your arms overhead. Maybe there's a little baby back bend. We're gonna come to a chair pose. This can be a really deep chair, a little more shallow. You're gonna bring the hands to the heart. Maybe sink your chair in a little deeper. You might stay there. You might twist around to the right. Maybe your left elbow wraps around your right knee. back to the center we're going to try to pick up our left foot and step ourselves back now you might choose a high lunge where you stay on the toes on the back leg keep your hips pointing forward or you might choose a warrior one so that's up to you if you choose the high lunge you have the option of dropping this back knee towards the floor and straightening out the leg or straightening out the front leg you choose the warrior one where this foot comes all the way onto the ground we're just going to operate this front leg straightening out the knee and then bending the knee so choose appropriately <laughs> we'll straighten the leg we'll bend the leg I'm straightening with my inhale and bending with my exhale but you could do it either way now Straightening out this leg, we're gonna put the back heel all the way onto the floor. We're gonna fold over once again. This will very likely result in a hamstring stretch. How far forward you fold is between you and your hamstrings. <laughs> Are you gonna to touch your shin and your forehead together or is there gonna be some space there? If this big toe is lifting off the ground, that usually means that you're trying to push your hamstrings beyond where they wanna be. Maybe lift your torso a little bit and re-secure that big toe. And then see if there's a little more room. And take one more breath here. Now we're gonna bend this front knee and swing ourselves around so we're a little more on a diagonal. Now I've got my hands on the floor, but you could also have your hands up on some blocks or a block. You can split a block between your hands. We're going to straighten out the front leg and bend it. If the hamstring stretch is too intense or this inner thigh stretch that we're kind of starting to get is too intense, just lift up a little bit, put those blocks in. Straighten out and bend. Straighten out and bend. So with the bend, we're in this humble warrior. You can stay right there. Just hang out with the humble warrior. Or you can put both hands on the floor and step back to down dog and hang out there, heels toward each other. Or you can add in a sun salutation, come into a plank, lower down. You can do as much time with the plank as you want. You could add in an extra push up here. Eventually, we're going to wind up together. A little three legged dog with the right leg in the air. Step that foot forward and then come back to that humble warrior, that bowing warrior. One more breath. Hopefully we're pretty close to caught up together. And then we're going to trans transfer ourselves onto this right leg. Pick the left leg up. Reach it up toward the ceiling in a standing splits. <laughs> and then bring it to the ground. Come up halfway. And fold. And then all the way up to standing. Give yourself a nice big stretch. And we'll find our way back to our mountain pose here at the top of the mat or whatever you've deemed as the top today. <laughs> oh. Now see if there's a difference between the right hemisphere and the left. So my calf muscles, remember, were a little uber tight, but I'm not feeling that same pressure now. And I'm feeling a little different sort of sense of length on my right side when compared to my left. See what's true for you. Take a nice big breath and stretch up. We're going to come to that chair pose. Again, it can be as deep as you like. You can keep this one a little shallow because we're going to do another round. <laughs> and so maybe as you bring your hands to your heart, you sink in a little deeper. Maybe you add a twist to this. 
Maybe your right elbow comes over around your left knee. Maybe it doesn't. <laughs> Two more breaths. Coming back to the center, I'm gonna pick up my right foot. And again, we're gonna step back and maybe your step goes into that high lunge. Maybe your step back comes to a warrior one. So whatever choice you've made, <laughs> we're now gonna straighten out one leg and then bend it. Straighten it and bend. Straighten and bend. We'll do that one more time. Straighten and bend. And we're going to straighten, get both feet on the ground and fold towards it. Again, choosing what's the appropriate amount of folding towards this leg. <laughs> for you today. One more breath here. All right, I'm gonna bend my front knee, turn my torso to the diagonal. And I've adjusted my back foot a little bit. And again, you can put your hands on the floor or you can leave your hands on some blocks or a block. We're gonna straighten out that front leg and hopefully because we've put, moved our torso, there's a little bit more of that sense of stretch on the inner thigh. If not, maybe move your torso just a little tiny bit more over to the side. Straighten out that leg, bend it. Straighten it out, bend it. <laughs> One more time, straightening it out, bending that knee, and then maybe you just hang out in that humble warrior. Maybe you step back into your downward dog and hang out there. Oh. Maybe <laughs> go ahead and add on. You Maybe you've already added on and you're doing like three extra push-ups or something like that, a little extra plank hang time. <laughs> All of that is legal, choose for yourself. <laughs> we'll do a three-legged dog at some point if we're in a dog. Step that foot forward and find our humble warrior. It's good for warriors to be humble. You can lace your fingers together behind your back, give your shoulders a big old stretch if you like. Oh. All right, we're gonna turn this into a standing splits. So again, we'll kind of shift the weight to that left leg this time, reach that right leg up toward the ceiling, stretch, and then bring it down. Come up halfway, <laughs> fold in if you can, come all the way to standing. Nice big stretch. Oh. Maybe give everything a little shake. And then find your way back to mountain pose. Oh. And we'll just check in again. <laughs> How did that mountain pose turn out? Now for me, the whole system, everything, every hip, every muscle in my legs, even the muscles in my shoulders, feel more relaxed with this mountain pose. My arms feel a little longer. <laughs> Doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but there you have it. So, fuck me. <laughs> I'm kind of a fan of this check-in process. <laughs> We're gonna take the arms up, give ourselves a stretch. We're gonna grab this right wrist, a little side bend over to the left. Coming back, we're gonna pick up the left leg, make a tree pose. Or maybe it's gonna be a tree wobble, that's okay. <laughs> oh. And then we're gonna step out with this left foot and turn the feet around so that we're in a wide angle forward bend. Now, your feet can be parallel or the toes can be turned out slightly, whatever's gonna be better for your knees. We'll fold forward. I'm gonna bring a block with me. And 
that seems like it might be helpful for a triangle for you, bring it with you. And you might keep your head more aligned to the sort of level with your torso. You might let yourself drop in. You might even pull yourself through a little bit. That's going to be between you <laughs> and your leg muscles. <laughs> Probably largely your hamstrings, but who knows. So we'll take two more breaths with this dangling pose or whatever version we're up to. Now, we're going to turn the right foot around towards the right, the top of the mat. And then we'll just bring the left foot around with it so that we can create a triangle shape. We're going to do a couple of different things. So I'm going to use a block to push off of, but you might use your shin bone. Or some folks, the hip is um, bendy enough that you can push off of the floor. So I'm going to push off of that block, rotate my ribs open, and pull that arm straight up like I'm pulling a bowstring from the ground. All the way up. I'm going to angle that arm over my ear stretch and then come back down into the slightly forward bend, okay? Same idea, stand tall on that block with my arm, pull that bowstring up, palm towards my ear, stretch out, fold forward. Do one more of those, pull that bowstring back, arm goes over the ear, fold forward. From here, I'm gonna bend my knee and swing myself around to the middle, two straight legs, Pause right there <laughs> for whatever version of this seems appropriate to you. You could, again, lace your fingers together and let your arms drop open. I'm just kind of letting my arms hang through this space here. <laughs> One more breath. We're going to pack ourselves up to about halfway. We'll turn the left toes around towards the back of the mat. Adjust the right foot so that it feels like we're in a pretty harmonious place. <laughs> All right, so I've got this block here. I'm going to stand tall on that block through my left shoulder, lifting through my armpit, pulling that imaginary bowstring up, turning my palm forward, letting that arm stretch out, and then whew, folding over. Standing tall, rotating my ribs, <laughs> pulling open that bow, stretching out my arm, folding forward. Standing tall, rotating my ribs, pulling back that bow, palm forward, stretch out, oh, fold in. <laughs> Let's do it one more time. Fold in. Again, I'm going to soften through the knee, spin myself back around to my wide angle. And I'm going <laughs> to sort of move my shoulder blades up and down. This feels really nice to me. It lets go of tension from my shoulders. And if you're up for that, try that. I'm just drawing one shoulder blade to the middle and then the other. And as I pull my one shoulder blade into the middle. I'm taking the other shoulder blade and pulling it off to the side as far as I can. So a little protraction, retraction, hanging upside down. Okay, one more of those. Then I'm going to come up about halfway. <laughs> I'm going to come into a wide squat. So we're turning the toes out, taking the hips down. I'm going to do my best to turn this wide squat into a tree standing on my left foot. <laughs> so you can go towards the back of the mat or towards the front of the mat, whatever you think is the better idea. <laughs> we'll find a tree shape. Stand it on the left leg. And then we'll put both feet nice and firm. Grab that left wrist, stretch over to the right. Come back to the center, and we'll find our mountain pose last time this morning for mountain pose. Oh, a nice check in there. Now we're going to do a pigeon, but you don't have to do 
the traditional version of the pigeon. So I'm gonna take us through to that point and then I'll give you some options. You might already know your options. <laughs> so if you have a favorite, you can go right into that. <laughs> I'm gonna fold forward, come up halfway. Now I'm just gonna step back to dog and go right into the pigeon, but you can throw in an extra sun salutation here as you like. So bring in that right leg forward. I'm gonna use my blanket that I had at the beginning, just set that under my hips so that I have a little bit of a landing pad. That's not necessary, but it's nice. You could even put a pillow there. Now, you can prop up, you can hold this back leg, you can fold forward. Those are options. Second option, which is the one I'm going to go for, is a seated version where we bring that leg up on top of the other one. So I'm going to put my right leg up on top of the left. Okay. Second option, third option, is to take this pose and lay on your back and bring the legs in toward you. You can bring the knees over top of each other instead of the shins. That's an extra. So choosing the version of the pigeon that's right for you today. <laughs> we're gonna take a deep breath and then we're gonna <sighs> let ourselves maybe relax into the pose a little bit. You can be a little more purposeful, drawing the navel in, drawing the sides of the waist in, drawing the hips towards each other. Or you can be really passive, let everything relax. Hmm. Hang out for about thirty more seconds. Big breath. Now, if you're doing the regular version of the pigeon, you're gonna bring your back leg, which is probably your left leg, around. If you're laying on your back, you can do a reclining twist instead. Because I chose the seated version, I'm already sort of stacked up. All I'm gonna do is just take this top leg and put it up, and I'm gonna to twist to my right. If you were doing the regular version of pigeon, you brought your left leg around, you probably wanna to twist towards your left. We're gonna do both sides, so it'll work out. One more breath. And we'll come out of there. Now from the seat, we're gonna take both legs out. You might wanna give them a little jiggle. So the feet are gonna be wide apart, but not as wide apart as they normally would go, just like as wide apart as a yoga mat. We're gonna turn the toes up and we'll try to keep the legs uh, positioned so that the toes are straight up. Sometimes I use a little block so that I have to touch my big toe mound <laughs> to that block. That keeps my inner thighs active, <laughs> which I tend to sort of let them get floppy. So you don't have to use the block, but if it's helpful, you can do that. Okay, so we're gonna take the arms out, we're gonna twist towards one side, and then from the hip, we'll fold forward. This is where my leg tends to splay out, so I'm gonna try to be mindful of that. We'll hit a little one, two, three sawing motion. Come back to the center, get really tall, turn the other way, fold in. One, two, three. And we'll just repeat that little saw. Two, three. Four, one, two, three. Four, one, two, three. One, two, three. Four, one, two, three. Four, one, two, three. We're gonna do one more round. 
One, two, three. Nice and tall. One, two, three. Nice and tall. All right, so you might have to kind of roll over, <laughs> step back to down dog, get yourself into your pigeon on the other side. If you did the seated version, you might just be right here along with me, stacking up a leg, or you might return to the reclining version. Ooh, whatever the right answer is, friends. <laughs> Choose your favorite option. And again, we're going for this kind of stretch down this outer thigh, under the glute, outer hip. It depends, you know, some of us even will feel the counter muscles, the inner thighs as well. Or maybe the hip flexors on the regular pigeon. There's a nice hip flexor stretch on the back leg. And just let yourself relax in and breathe. We'll stay a little while. about 30 seconds, maybe a little less than that. Two more breaths. So with this last breath, take an inhale. Then we're gonna transition around into our twist. So now we're gonna have this left leg up this time. And if you came around from the regular pigeon, you'll have your right leg up. So we'll twist in the direction that makes sense. <laughs> oh, sit up tall, be kind of regal. We'll take two more breaths. And coming on back to the middle. Time is going fast today, y'all. It's time for some relaxation. So what you might do to start with is just pause in a seated pose. I'm going to do a little happy baby on my back. Um, if you would like to, you can do uh, seated meditation as your final relaxation. You can do legs up the wall or over a chair, or you can do the more traditional corpse pose. If this is where you head off to work, <laughs> have a great day. <laughs> Namaste, yogis. <laughs> oh. big fan of like a little blanket. So we had that blanket from the beginning. You can kind of tuck it in um, somewhere near the top of the thigh. And as you stretch your legs out, oh, it just helps your hip flexors relax and your low back. If that's always been an issue for you, this could be really nice. And then take your shoulder blades and kind of pull them a little bit out to the sides. Let your arms find a comfortable position that broadens up uh, the upper back often just makes it a little more restful for the shoulders. And give yourself a little pillow or whatever would be nice for your head. So 
it's super bright where you are, you could cover your eyes with a little eye pillow or a towel or a sleep mask, whatever you got handy. <laughs> it's a little darker. And let your body relax. This is the part where we're doing a pose for our nervous system. <laughs> this is all about letting ourselves soften in. Our consciousness, our attention, our awareness come into the back, sort of more intuitive centers of the brain. So it's almost like we sort of ease the seat back mentally. Let the body go. Take a moment and notice your breath or the neighbor's dog barking, whatever's happening at your house. <laughs> to each other with a nice big breath. I am so honored that you joined me today for some yoga Pilates fusion. Thank you so much. <laughs> Let's take a big inhale and a big sigh. <sighs> Namaste friends.